Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo video on how to farm the Telesto Catalyst, which only drops from the Eater of Worlds Prestige and only drops from a certain chest. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that on each character every week regardless. The Prestige version locks out your weapons, as you can see there. You've got to take certain weapons in, so this guide does not incorporate swords or anything like that. So, as I say, I'm going to show you how to do it on every character. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to show you a full run through on the Titan. Now, as you can see here, the Titan's using a top tree sunbreaker for the shoulder charge. I've got the rose on for extra mobility. I've got 100% mobility on my armor and the lion rampants with catapult lift as my jump. That's all I'm going to need to do this. So I'm going to do the Titan as a full run. So I'm going to show you all the jumping, how to glitch through the door, then activate all the rings to get the chest and then i'm going to show you the warlock and the hunter how to get to the ring part because the rings is the same on every character once you know how to do it on one there's no difference they both just fall through rings and have to activate seven rings so rather than make the video super long i decided just to do a full run on one character and then the jumping section on the other two you'll understand when you see what point we get to that it's it's all you guys are ever going to need to be able to do this on each character so when you come in here, you go through that massive door, uh, interesting story, when this raid first first dropped, nobody knew that was how you got into the Eater of Worlds, and even the world's first team, they, they couldn't find how to get in, so it is, it is that door. Make your way through, just follow the way I'm going, and then you're going to get to the section here that's a big massive drop down. So what you're going to do is you're going to sprint off, don't bother jumping, just sprint off and keep holding forward, and that keeps your shoulder charge activated for when you need it. When you come out of this area, you'll see there's like a, an, a lit up pathway. We want to land on the door above the pathway. We do not want to touch the floor. That's the glitch. That is how you get past this part. So just keep boosting, cutting off, boosting, cutting off, and we're going to land on this, this kind of strut that sticks out. That's the part we need to land on. Then we go through here. Now, what you see me do there was I drop down that. There's a little crack between there, and there's a kind of a part where you land on that pushes you forward. Make sure you're ready to boost up to the left to get on this pipe I'm standing on. Then we're going to jump to that corner, the corner I'm aiming at now. We're going to land on this bit here, and then we're going to look round to our right. You see this little ledge? We can fall, walk along that ledge forward. Make sure, just like i done there, make sure you do not go too far forward because you will just hit the first little crack in the wall and that will stop you getting to the second one. It doesn't matter, you see here, it doesn't matter if you fail it or if, if, if you fall, just make sure you do not hit the ground. So as you can see, you kind of stay on that ledge and you boost up over the ledge and you land on this little bit here. Now we've got to jump, jump onto this pole. Now, again, you'll see better on the Warlock. Uh, got to be really careful with it. You'll see better on the Warlock what happens if you miss that jump. Because you can miss it. But we landed on it. So now, we just back up a little bit. Get a bit of a sprint. And then we're going to jump. And we're going to feather our jump. So it's three kind of boosts. So you're going to boost, cut it off. Boost, cut it off. Boost. And then shoulder charge at the end of it. It's the same for all of these jumps. So make sure you're on a flat part here, as you can see, that you can sprint off of. Sprint, boost. Th this one this one here is a bit easier. You can just boost the whole way, and I think you can do it on the last one. But that first big jump off the pole, it's boost, cut it off, boost, cut it off, and then boost with a shoulder charge at the end. And the same here, we're just going to boost, and then when we get close to it, shoulder charge, and we're good. Now this part here, there's like an open hole, that's the doorway out of this area. If, if for any reason you're unsure if you failed it, you'll know if you get to this part and this door's closed. If it's closed, you've got to restart the thing, reset the checkpoint and do it again. So drop down here and once you get past those arc canisters, you'll see these three pipes. The exit from this area is at the top of the pipes. So what I always do is, as you can see here, I boost just to get out of the, out of the gravity lifts pull or push. Follow the follow the path round, and you're going to come here. It, it's not really a, it, it's, it's a nothing part, but you just you have to be careful. When you get to this part here, you're going to see this happen. As soon as you go out, it's going to start this section, and it's going to do it almost immediately again. You have to get into cover before it does it again. 
it, as I said, it's not very difficult. Just run up, get into cover here. You can see those pistons. When they push, that's when you get that big arc conduction. We're going to skip the cover that was at the top of that pipe there and go straight to this cover over here. Then the piston will slam. You'll get that, arc, that electrifying effect. And then we're out of here. And that's kind of, that's the jumping bit on the, on the Titan. It's the, it's the easiest of the three characters because it doesn't need anything extra to do it. The line rampants with catapult jump are all you're going to need. So, you've made it here. You never touch the floor. If you touch the floor and you get escape the reactor at any point, you've failed it. You've got to go back and do it again. But if you get to this part and it's all good, what you've got to do is run out into this kind of... Uh, it's kind of like a cannon, and you'll get shot out the other side. Now, when you get shot out, there are seven rings below you. You have to activate all seven to get the chest to appear. Sounds a little bit trickier than what it actually is. It's not too bad. So they're in three tiers. So you've got two rings next to each other in the first tier, three in the second tier, and two in the third tier. If you get your angles right, you can activate th the three on the right-hand side all in one fall. The three on the left hand side all in one fall. And then the one in the middle on its own. So if you follow the way I'm going to go here. You'll be able to activate three, three and one. So go through this crack and you'll see it just in between these two. These two blocks here. There's your first one. Just keep falling and you'll see the second one. And then the third one is. When you drop down through these three. It puts you in line almost for the for all of them. And if you look back up, you'll see, be able to see which ones you've activated. See that one's got kind of a blue glow and that's got a red glow. The blue glow means you've been through it. The red glow means you haven't. So once you get to the bottom, you just wipe. It will spawn you back up at the, at the front of the cannon. And you're going to boost through. Now we're going to get the three on the left. So you see the door will open again. And then we're going to fall down and get the three on the left hand side. Just follow the locations that I, I kind of drop into. Once you hit the first one, you're almost in line for the other two. It's very small, fine movements you've got to make to get through the other two. But it's just finding the first one you need to, need to hit on both sides. Once you find that, it's easy. So as you can see, instead of going through the rocks on the left, we're going down this way. You see that one? It's on the edge of the rock. And once you hit that one, it's very easy now to hit the other ones. You're right above them. And that's the three on the left. We need one more. And then Callus will present us with a gift. Now, for anybody that's doing this for friends or whatever, wait till you get to this point. When you get to this point, uh, not this point exactly, but once you get to the cannon part, then you, friends can join you. And if, you know, if they can't make the jump or maybe they're not confident or you're not confident on your hunter or your warlock or whatever... You can then come in and your friends can join you and you can switch character and you can get the rings together. But get to this point first. So that's six rings got. Now we've got to get the ring in the middle. And you just kind of go between these rocks here. And you'll see I'm practically aiming at it. There we go. You see it right below us. And that is all the rings you've got to hit. You can do that on all characters. The, the, the Titan is no different to the Warlock and the Hunter when it comes to this part. Open up the chest. And this is the chest that you can get the Telestal Catalyst from. Now you can do it on all three characters each week. You can't farm this the way you can other chests and raids. You have to do one on each character each week. So, that's the Titan done. Now we're going to have a look at the Warlock. The Warlock needs Top Tree Dawn Blade, Wings of Sacred Dawn, and a high mobility uh, loadout, 100% mobility, is is really what you want here. Now, for me, the Warlock's the, kind of the trickiest to do it on. The jumping is, is more technically difficult, I think, on the Hunter, but only be, more time-consuming, maybe not technically more difficult. But the, the, the Warlock is the most difficult for, like, getting from the top of the door after the big long drop up, like, through the crack and up onto the pipe. Because the Hunter and the Titan have vertical jumps. They raise their height with their jumps. The Warlock doesn't. So, again, follow this kind of path. Now, 
when you get to the part with a big long drop, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be utilizing the Wings of Sacred Dawn's kind of hover in the air when you aim. What that does is it does put you forward a little bit if you've already got forward momentum, but it allows your Icarus dash to basically generate while you're still in the air. So that's kind of why I use it. So when you get to this part here, you're just going to sprint off and then roughly the same, but you're going to incorporate Wings of Sacred Dawn. It's roughly the same as the Titan. So once you get out of this area here, you'll be kind of free falling. So you're going to do a boost, cut off the boost, and then you're going to aim. Then Icarus Dash, double Icarus Dash, then aim. Then boost forward a little bit, and then aim. And then you can you, you can drop through the death zone here, boost, and then Icarus Dash onto the top here. Same thing again, we're going to go in, down onto this little kind of thing that pokes out of the wall here, this little tube. Now, when you drop through here, you've got to make sure you've got your Icarus Dash, because you're going to go through here, I'm boosting, and now Icarus Dash up on top, and you're up on the pipe. So when you when you come in, the, the, the corner you need to jump on is in the opposite side to where you come in. So... Once, once, I always wait for that purple light to show up. That's where we come in, and we go up here, and then up onto the pipe, and I'll wait for that purple light to appear, because it just lights everything up, because I've actually changed my my brightness settings, because it's so dark in here. So you get onto this little kind of walkway, and then boost right up, right through this little crack bit here, this little hole in the wall. Make sure you're on here, and then it's a little bit easier to hit this platform, but I'm going to show you, if you fail this jump, which can happen, don't land on the platform. Make sure you land in the water. It's not really water, but in the, not on the platform, in that purple stuff. If you land on the purple stuff, if you if you don't land on the platform, and you land on the purple in the purple stuff, it doesn't give you a checkpoint, and you can just redo the jump, and you're good. Just for anybody that's wondering... I normally do make that jump first time. I figured when I was doing it with the Hunter, I, ha I missed it a couple of times to start with till I was learning the jump. And I figured it was worthwhile showing people that, because this is a bit of a, pr some people might see that jump and think, I don't fancy that. It was worthwhile showing that if you do miss it, it's not a big deal. So I've consumed my grenade, which gives me heat rises. That's how you make the first jump. That massive kind of boost uh, increase lasts longer, boost a little bit higher, gets you through that first jump. Now, you do not need your grenade for any of the other jumps. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm some great jumper or anything. I'm saying it because you really don't need it. You'll see here. So, a, just a double click of the jump button off your sprint, and then as soon as you think you need it, Icarus dash, and you make it no problem. You can wait for your grenade if you don't feel confident enough to do that. But, uh, I would probably bet, because it's very, it, it just is the natural length that you'll jump at. I reckon everybody will get that. Again, same here. Double click your jump button, get your sprint on. Icarus dash when you're almost over at the side. And the same applies when you get to this part. If this, if this drop down section is open, you've done it, no problem. Just make sure if you don't make that jump onto the high pillar, the, 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 the really kind of small landing spot you've got to land on, Make sure you do not land on the platform. Land in the fluid, and you you haven't you haven't started the checkpoint. That's that is the cheese. You've got to get through that part without active without touching the floor. If you do, you'll get escape. You'll get a a new loading area called it, and, and you'll get a new part of the part of the raid called escape the reactor. That's when you know you've failed it. So same thing again here. That'll activate as soon as you get to the door, and then when you come in, it'll reactivate. And just run to the next piece of cover and make sure that you're in cover before those pistons slam again. So we're gonna we're gonna get in here. I nearly went for it, but I decided it's not worth it. I'm glad I didn't because I would have died. Make sure you're in the right cover. Now we've got plenty of time to get to the next piece of cover. Just make sure you're in cover for the piston slam again. And there, that's us, we're out. And now you're back at the once once you once you get to here and you drop back down, you're back at the rings again. And you've already seen how to do them on the Titan. If you haven't, just keep going back and having a look at the rings. But 
the rings you can drop down as many times as you need to until you've got all seven so it doesn't have to be done with any set amount of drop downs or respawns now the hunter the hunter does it on bottom tree on bottom tree night stock on mobius quiver triple jump stompies but what makes it slightly different is you're going to need your super a few times in here. So as you can see, I've got a 100% intellect build. But what I can also do is if I change my armor about, I've got 100% mobility. It's worthwhile having both. It's just, it can get tedious waiting for your super. So it's, it's nice to be able to just change and that's, that's, that's that. So start with 100% intellect. Now it's, it's... I'm saying start with 100% intellect. It's all on you. If you don't mind waiting another 20, 30 seconds or whatever, however long you're going to wait, then that's fine. But you do need your super two or three times. So it's worthwhile getting yourself back as fast as possible. Follow the route round until you get to the part where you drop down. And that's where the hunter run changes. Everything's the same. The rings are the same. It's just dropping through the rings. This first part's the same. But between the drop down and the rings, it's a little bit different. So the hunter's going to utilize Mobius's, Mobius Quiver's multi-shot to keep them in the air, to keep moving forward, because the hunter jump on its own cannot make that distance. So I get to here, and then I just wait for my super. Once I get my super, we're going to run off the edge because we don't want to use a jump, because we, we, we don't need to use the jump. So change back to your 100% mobility. Back up a little bit and just sprint off the edge. Now, these kind of gravity pillars are going to keep firing you along and then kind of shoot you out the other side. When you get shot out, you'll be in all this kind of mist cloud. Wait till you jump out of the cloud. Do one single jump and then start firing your super. Keep pers pressing forward so that as you're staying up in the air, you keep get moving forward. Then you'll drop through the darkness, the, the death zone here. And you'll land on here. Now the same thing. You're going to drop down this side. This little little crack in between the two things. You'll see here. You can kind of get pushed forward. And then double boost up onto the up onto the pipe. Really simple. But really simple once you know what you're doing. Give this a couple of attempts guys. Don't give up on your first go. You'll get it. I've got faith in everybody that tries this. Jump onto this corner, you see we've got this little ledge, move along the ledge and then double boost right right over the top. And then just jump out, make sure you're on here. Then there's this jump. This jump, some people might think this jump's a little bit uh, scary. You'll get it, it's almost the full length of the hunter jump. If you fail it, as I've already showed you guys on the warlock, make sure you fall, if, if at all possible, into the purple stuff. Change to your intellect build, and then change once you get your super, change back to the mobility. You'll see I don't, I forgot to change back to the mobility, and you'll see here. So you do a single jump, and then I done a double boost. Maybe not such a good idea. Do a single jump and one boost, and make sure you've got height. Because as you can see there, it was a little bit closer than, than I would have liked. Jump over to this platform, and then wait for your super again. Make sure you change. Now, I'm already on my 100% intellect. You can see me here checking and realizing that I never changed to the mobility build. So, wait for your super again. Once you get your super, change back to the mobility build. And then change change back to, as I say, change back to the mobility build. And then get to the other side. Now, this is the last time you're going to need, actually need the, 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 the super. You can make this next jump without the super. I've done it many times. You can make it without the super. But I know there's going to be some people want to do this who maybe aren't as confident with jumping as maybe I am. Uh, or, you know, just maybe have an issue with jumping. Not very, you know, as I say, not very confident. So I've waited to get my super just to show you guys. You know, it is much simpler with the super. But you can make it. But you are going to, with 100% mobility... You are going to mantle. You're not going to land. And you'll see here. I get my super. I And then make sure you've got your mobility build on. Although 
I'm saying make sure you don't really need your 100% mobility for this, but it's worth changing for the rest of it. And you'll see here, this right hand side, you'll see I'm just going to go over it now. That's where you're going to mantle if you don't use your super next to that railing. And the same thing applies once you're over here. If the door, if the drop down is open, that is you. You, you, you can go forward and keep moving forward and activate the rings. And as I say, this the, the exit, as I've already said, the exit is at the top end of the pipe. So make sure you're facing the pipes. And once you get up close to it, just jump out of the gravity gravity cannons kind of hold. Same thing again, guys. Follow the route round and you're going to come to this part with the, the pistons. And uh, make sure you're in cover. You, the pistons will activate as soon as you get here. And then when you go outside, they'll activate again. So just wait at this cover. Move from cover to cover, making sure that you're there before the pistons activate. Now, if you die here, it's worthwhile saying, if you die here, it doesn't end your run. It's just, you don't really want to die. It won't, it doesn't give you a checkpoint. You're home free now. So, that is it, guys. That's exactly how you do it. Just follow after here. Follow the, the direct, the, my previous kind of directions and where I'm going to go in this, this, this run as well on how to get to the rings. And that's the run, guys. Thank you very much for watching. You know I always appreciate your support. And I hope this helps some of you guys get this before sunset. Before November. Uh, as per, if you enjoyed it, a like would be appreciated. If you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments. Maybe uh, if you haven't, subscribe. And until the next video, take it easy, guys.